Did um, some norms for the for everyone to use, and so there are cards on the table. Um, some of them represent or go along with Dr. Walter Cooper's norms, but we'll just stick with RCSD. So they take an inquiry stance, uh, ground all our statements and evidence assume positive intentions and take responsibility for impact, stick to protocol and hear all voices, start and end on time, be here now, expect non-disclosure, or not disclosure, non-closure, and expect discomfort in the service of learning. Is there anything that um, anyone would like to add in this question? We're moving forward. I do just I do have to leave at four thirty. Okay. Just as if you see me. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the next thing that we have up here is kind of just to review what the community engagement their purpose. And I know some of you were already on the committee. Some may be new. Um, so, Ms. Clymer had this lovely PowerPoint, but we're now still going to. <laughs> we didn't steal, but we borrowed. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll quickly go over but not giving it back. just a few of the slides. <laughs> not all of them. So it kind of just breaks it down. Community engagement team stands for CET, and it plays a role in development and sustainability of a full functional community school, which we are now leading into. Um, has many different <coughs> roles in the day-to-day -day operation of a community school, and if the school is a receivership school, the CET is mandatory um, to meet one to one. So the key members, representatives from, oh, you know what? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> um, so representatives from the community as well, the school community itself, as well as the surrounding community that the school um, sits in is very important. Um, over the summer, we were fortunate enough to attend the community school summit and one of the key things that they really wanted to drive home was making sure that there were um, every voice is heard as well as um, representation from all different stakeholders. So um, if there is a community agency that we may later want to come to the table because it supports some of our vision and goals, then we're going to um, invite them to come in and, uh, and join us as we move forward. Um, so of course it must have the principal, at least one parent will work on that. Um, teachers, school staff, student representation, so we'll work on that as well. And um, notes and minutes, of course, to be kept um, in order to you know, help support those who cannot be here at all times. This is kind of blurry. that we want to walk away with is um, collaboration. Yeah. One of the important things that we want to make sure that we know um, is collaboration. 
making sure that um, we have one goal in mind, which is one, moving the school off of receivership, as well as just overall being able to show progress and school improvement um, for students, family, and as well as even the community um, and how we're supporting each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to ask? Because <laughs> the sun is like right up there. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it's not going to help. It's like all the way up there. Thank you, though. I'll just stand this way. I won't turn around. Sorry if I don't look in your direction. Um, so still, see. Oh. Anybody tall enough? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, can I just add one thing? Yes. I, um, not that this is discussion, but I do have a principal's meeting tomorrow. I am curious to find out or to hear what. Um, leadership is going to say in regards to the budget gap. Um, some of the things that did come up was um, extended day. So I don't know if that means for the schools that are currently um, providing an extended day program at their school or does that involve um, the new 10 schools that are in receivership and us moving forward. So there's going, there will need to be some clarifying um, issues or concerns. Um, so I guess I'm just, I'm just putting it out there that, I mean, it doesn't mean that we're off receivership, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> but um, there will be some things that we need to, to discuss because I know that that's one of our demonstrable indicators that we'll probably will be talking about later. Mm -hmm. so. so the next thing is to set upcoming meeting dates. So I know I just randomly chose Wednesday, but is there any particular date? I know Thursdays, well that's in the morning, and the second Wednesday, right? Or is it the first Wednesday? It's the first Wednesday. The first Wednesday of the month we have um, PD, staff PD. But just wanted to see what date would be good for most in here so that we can um, set our meetings in advance and, and times so that we can move forward. Mm -hmm. this, there. Does this time, is this time a problem for the school, this works for me. This works for us. I don't know how it would work for um, The Rye School has the same, they're set team meeting the same dates. But they have it right at three, so I go over there for like 45 minutes and then come right here because it's right there. So okay. it works at this point. On Wednesdays? Mm. What if we Why did? we have on Monday. <clears throat> but we didn't get much attendance. No. So Monday and Friday is not good. Tuesday is just the first, the second, the second Tuesday, Tuesday is our Tuesday school days. Mm -hmm. So we'll stick to the second Wednesday unless something major. Mm -hmm. So the next one would be second Wednesday. 13. December no. 13th? No, November. The opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, November 13th. December 11th. December 11th. Yep. Still going to be wrong. I'll fill in. Okay, we can send invites. I'll, okay. send, I'll send invites. How do you get in the parking lot with all the buses there? You can't. Okay, <laughs> that's how I when my experience was. The back lot doesn't have as many buses this year, so you may be able to squeeze through. And if you not, here. it's super close. If you get here earlier, yeah, you can get, then you can possibly pull into the lot. 
of the. They start lining up at three o'clock. <clears throat> so. But I think the last two buses the last will pull up at three thirty. Almost three thirty. Yeah. Now we'd be meeting at three forty-five or. Is that a good time for everyone? Okay. The next thing is to review the demonstrable So if you can just take a minute, um, this might be review for some, but just kind of in the spirit of uh, knowing. All together between um, level one and level two demonstrable indicators, we have 13. Uh, level ones are indicators that the state has designated um, based off of our 2017-18 scores. These are the ones that they feel that we did not meet and we must show progress towards. And then the level twos, um, which is that first one on the corner, that first box on the bottom, and I'm not really explaining very well, bottom right corner, and then the four on the back page. Those are our level twos. And those are the indicators that were um, selected and agreed upon by our community engagement team last year. So um, we just received this letter uh, last week, sharing, sharing it with you that there are three with yellow question marks, which means that we don't have enough data or there's the data is not available to indicate whether or not we passed it. And then if there's a green check, it will tell you what our target was and then what we actually did last past Last school year, I was going to say last past school year. Um, there are uh, three indicators that we did not meet, and therefore they're saying as a whole we did not meet our mark for last school year. Um, I'm still trying to and, and looking as to questions, because those with the question marks, like, I don't know how we're penalized if they don't have data on that. Um, so, because in order to pass, you must have 67% or higher, and we got 65%. So, it was really close. Um, so just to kind of review, the first one says three through eight ELP success ratio, and that's really looking at our students that um, where English is their second language. Um, the three through eight ELA, and then um, three through eight math, that is looking at all the students in the school um, score between level two level three and level four, um, we're trying to get a percentage to pass, okay? And so we were able to meet those indicators. Um, then the next one, I'm getting confused. Oh, you know what? The, the one, the one, the two next where it says for ELA all students MGP, that's where they're comparing us to same schools that kind of have like the same demographics as us, um, same size. 
And so we were able, we actually passed that as well. School safety, that is dealing with your suspensions. And so we did meet that. Our suspensions were a lot less than they were in the past. Um, just really doing a lot of restorative practice and doing mediations with, with the students. Um, we did not pass our grade four science. Um, and we typically pass, so when we were looking at that, not saying that, um, I think what I'm just trying to say is that um, we need to let you know that last year um, in fourth grade we had um, two classes that were self-contained. And I think that, <laughs> that played a, a big factor, um, but we need to keep that in mind because the science, a lot of it is hands-on, so they should be able to, to pass. What, what do you mean by self-contained? Self-contained is we have classrooms where there's 12 students with one teacher and one TA, or we have um, a makeup of a 15-1 where that one is just 15 students with one teacher. So it means students open. with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the easier way of saying it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that that is one indicator when we looked at it because there was only um, 39 students, no, it was 59, I'm sorry, 59 students and 20 of them were special ed students. So that's a, that's a high percentage um, for special ed. We just missed our chronic absenteeism. Our target was 20% and we got 21.8. And one of the things that we were looking at is last year in April, we only had 17% chronic absenteeism. So between April, I forgot what the date, it was, I think it was in the middle of April, but that May and June, we went up by 4%, and so that's a, a lot. And so we, as a school, are gonna have to talk about how do we keep the students engaged and coming up until the last day. Um, then we got a question mark for the community school model because this is our planning year. Um, they also gave us a question mark for how are we gonna uh, use the 200 additional hours We did pass uh, the ELA, and the ED means economically disadvantaged. So it's just looking at all the students that are economically disadvantaged, and they we met our, our target with passing with either a two, three, or four. Um, we passed our family community engagement. They have a rubric that um, they go by, so we ended up passing <coughs> that. I'm not sure how because we didn't have um, anyone come to do a visit, you know. Mm -hmm. So, on that time we by that following year when we took the parents. But this is supposed to be also the last year, so I don't know. I don't know. And then the last one with the math for our economically disadvantaged, we missed our target by a half a percent. So it seems like so close, but no cigar, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to share this with, with you all that we, um, we've got some movement and shaking to do to make sure that our, our scholars are learning. Um, but we, we definitely wanted to share this data piece, data point with you. Okay. I don't know, Jess, you got anything to add or did I talk I think too you much? Covered, no, I think you covered it all. I think it's a matter of really paying close attention to like, how far or how close we were to actually meeting um, the goals, especially for the um, economic and disadvantage. Mm -hmm. It was like 5.5. Um, for science, we kind of had a plan for how to help support that. Mm -hmm. And for chronic absence,
absenteeism, which is what where we're really trying to figure out what could we do and how could we support the families where this is where like that community school model would really help in um, the realm of figuring out what supports they need, um, what agencies in the community we, we could possibly reach out to, depending on what um, needs they have in, um, in order to really best support them and get the kids here. So we wanted to make sure that our team was well aware of the data. The next um, thing is, you, the, the yes. numbers after the indicator, like this indicator 94, is it? Is it? Document someplace that says what the different indicators are. Where oh, where it says like indicator ninety four, like one eighty or one hundred five. Oh, ninety four. Yeah, there is actually, and we can I can send it, but we can. Um, there's like a dictionary, mm -hmm. um, and it will explain all of the indicators. So we'll send that in an email to everybody. So that you can, you know, because it'll tell you like formulas and. Okay. Down here at the bottom, it also says that for the process, you can visit the school receivership page. Um, so I'm not sure where that is. There is, I don't, it might be a link. It, so there, it, might it probably was a, I don't know how they was going to. Um, because they didn't send this to us electronically. Oh, yeah, they did. I can send this. New York State ED.gov? Yeah, it's on the state. Ad, it's yeah. on the state so they might page. have the formulas on there somewhere? Yeah. Oh, they definitely but I can send yeah. it. I can send this and the, the formula as well. Let me put this in my notes. Since y'all got me multitasking today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you doing that stuff? I did when you started talking. Oh, that's called teamwork. Yeah. Teamwork, teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing is the um, receivership data dashboard. That's it. So if you could just take a minute. Um, we didn't give you the whole continuation plan, but it's to give you an idea of um, what as a school in July, we indicated um, some of the goals that we were going to focus on for each demonstrable indicator. So if you were to look at the first one, uh, school safety, um, we had to give what our baseline um, score was, but then we'll also need your help with uh, continuing because we have to do a quarterly report which is due um, in like two weeks. And that's where we have to give data on like, well, based off what we said, what is our data point at that particular time? So. And as far as parent engagement, um, how can we measure that? What are we looking for? There's that rubric. There's a rubric. Um, uh, yeah. is coming in at different points. So they were here um, the 7th, 8th, and 9th, and they met with schools, um, which was interesting, because I would think that our school would have been on there, but they told me that they were meeting with schools that did not meet their demonstrable indicators. But then we got this letter saying that we didn't meet. So. I don't know, maybe we're on hold because of the question marks, but they were here um, meeting mainly with, it was a lot of the high schools and some of the K-8 schools. The state was meeting with them. Well, 
Was it level one indicators or level two that was picked by the state? Level one. Level one and then level two is by the school? Mm -hmm. And so where we feel like, well, I felt like eight is a lot. Um, there are some schools that have 16. So, you know, it's just based on your subgroups and um, different areas that you didn't need. So your quarterly report then is going to be reporting the data points that are on, obviously on, yep. on this, even though it won't be it won't necessarily be comparative data unless they compare it to last year at this time. How I don't they, know. Or is it just, because I know she asked the question about what data points for parent, parent engagement, <clears throat> and it talks about, in here on parent engagement, it talks about, um, you know, PTO meetings and the minutes from the PTO meetings, the attendance, all of that. So is that what you report out on? Is like how many PTO meetings there were or how many suspensions for that quarter? Is that well, this quarter, yes. Yeah, so, like right now, from the start of the school <coughs> year. So it's not it's not it's not comparative. It's not comparative. No. I mean, just what is reported on it. Was reported, okay. Yeah. <coughs> to my understanding. Okay. Okay. I could be wrong, but I believe it's because the state may do that. The the state may look at that. Not. I'm not saying you have to do that, but what the state is going to look at is that because you're. You're on you're on the list because of your 17 18 school year. So you have you have 18 19 complete and then 19 20. So they'll probably take a look at you know September through November data from let's just say disciplinary referrals or suspensions. They may take a look at that time this year compared to last year. But you don't have, but what you're saying is you don't have to do that. Yeah, they don't <clears throat> want, they, I guess what I'm saying is I don't have to report on that. Like right. I don't have to compare to report, but what. Just what do, it says. Just what it says. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, you know, which is, you know, in some instances we're, we're just getting started, you right. know, so it might right. look okay in some areas, but like one of our concerns that we were just talking about is, um, where is it? The chronic absenteeism mm -hmm. indicator 160. <clears throat> so when we report out um, right now, if we're reading the data correctly, we're about 19% chronic absenteeism. And that's our target for this year. So we can't get any higher, or we're gonna miss our, our mark. Um, the, the one thing that we did talk about was at, at the beginning of the year, usually within the second, third day, we start looking at no-shows. And we had 25 no-shows. Um, we're glad to report now that we're down to zero, because we have found all of the students, but we do have um, various students that have had multiple absences. And so now our, our focus is like, how are we gonna get these students into school each and every day? Um, and, you know, just meeting with the chief, um, we gotta go beyond making phone calls and home visits. So. That's it's going to be important, you know. Different agencies like are we going to be able to provide support for some of these families once we really start digging into the reasons why? So, are there any questions or, or anything that I know this is a big, thick document and it might be a lot to look at? Um, but are there any questions, anything that you think that might need revisions or, because this is kind of how we'll be monitoring and keeping us all up to date. So is it your expectation to have 
I dress over any kind of signing shoes with him, and I hop on because I work with families. Um, signing shoes, so I can have you in giving time. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because when, if they come vi to visit, they can they want to ask and. And, and it may not even just necessarily having the physical sign-in sheets. It may, we may have to go in and create data saying that we've had three PTO meetings since September and at each meeting we need to say we've had 50 or 20 or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, See, the difference, with, the difference with parent engagement too in regards to, I mean, it's a little bit easier to compare testing data from one year yeah. to the next. What the state looks at for parent engagement is the documentation of the contacts that you've had with families. So, like, so they'll look at your, you know, they'll want to see, I, you know, your phone logs, your, you know, your individual meetings, you know, not the content of what's in there, like but flyers that have been sent well, out. Well, right, but like, like, say you you get a phone call tomorrow from a family who or a parent who they don't have any food for dinner, you know, and they're they're reaching out to you. That that should be documented. Mm -hmm. That. And and, and 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 I was just telling Miss Clever, and that's something that I have to get better at. Right. Oh yeah, know. and you're not the only one. Because believe me. What yeah. What happens so often? Is right. You know, when they get going, right? I just take care of the math. But Ms. Yep. But Ms. I can also want you to know, and I think that this is something that we have, we need to commute. Is this whole family engagement thing is not on you? No, I, it's right, right. The entire staff. So, like right. when I talk to staff about, you know, documenting, you know, when you talk to parents, it it covers the gamut, and right. what I think you're. You're, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I don't know how clearly I've, I've um, made it with staff that, you know, it may come to a point where I may need to ask how many phone calls have each classroom teacher done just regarding behaviors, in regards to attendance, you know, academics. Right. I mean, the list goes really deep when, um, talking about family engagement. They want to know, well, how frequent are we sending communication to the families about what's going on, the instructional. Right. So, I mean, it's a, it's a lot. Now, I have a question. Um, and this kind of piggybacks from our school-based meeting. Um, the attend actions were you want staff to input information is it only regarding attendance? Because I know that teachers do dojo and other forms of communication, maybe texting, calling on their personal cell phones. Where do you document that? That's the that's the thing that as a school we have to. Can it be added to the attend action so that it can be available for anybody to look at? Is that possible? I think. The only thing with that whole power school, you know, you start getting into some privacy, some privacy issues, and so because um, I'm thinking of a, of a, I guess I can't use another word or find another word, a database to record. Let's say Ms. Wolf talks to Mr. Smith about you know Johnny's you know behavior today, whether it was good or bad. Um, and so she's communicated, whether it's text, because a lot of parents just text nowadays, that's part of where we are. Where do we as a school indicate that, that she has made those connections? Um, so where do, where do we I mean, I don't think you're, I don't think you're gonna, I don't think you're gonna have a universal system for that, and I agree not to, you know, because power school is probably not the, the appropriate place to put that, but even is something as simple as creating your own document, your own Excel spreadsheet, that this is what you're, you know, that this is what you're doing. Because it, truth be told, with this right here, this is an opportunity for the school and the school staff to pat themselves on the back and really document what you do beyond to get to that to that goal. And parent engagement's a perfect one. 
you know, if you meet a parent at Dunkin' Donuts for a cup of coffee because they're struggling with something, that should be documented because that's, you know, you're going, you're going above and beyond and, and you're connecting that family back to the school. So it's, it's that kind of stuff. You know, it gets a little bit trickier, I, think, I know, with teachers um, and staff. So, I mean, I know a, a lot of teachers, if not all, have some sort of parent communication mark within their classrooms, but I'm wondering if we can do some sort of, not shared document amongst all teachers, but doing um, like a living document, a Google spreadsheet where like a new tab is for each student, and then that way they're inputting their data on there and it's shared with you so that when they do ask for that information, you have access to all of the phone logs, all of the interactions, all of the text messages, or when they have occurred between the parents and. Mm -hmm. That's something that, you know, as a school we can talk about creating. Yeah, just a school-wide, you know. Because I think, and I'm just saying, I believe that teachers do make some kind of communication, a lot of communication with parents, all the time, but because it's not documented, we're being deemed for it, right? But well, I wouldn't say it's not documented because it, a lot of them have logs, or you know, they have their own logs. But to be like when a chief or somebody comes right. in, right? That's what I mean. They the don't see that accessibility of it is not as You can't go to every room and ask for <laughs> Yeah, it's you know, and the reason I'm talking a lot because they have significant state monies separate from the school district monies to provide social emotional support services all day long. Mm -hmm. So that includes community school coordination, that is, you know, parent engagement, parent liaison is all part of, of that. So when you as a, as a culture and a school and an environment are all on the same page and build that culture and understand what, it, what that's about, that's what that's what happens. So they do have um, everything is documented. You know, we we do we do Halloween in the hallways there, and we get at least eight hundred people. Mm -hmm. But we also have eight stations to make sure that we're getting and capturing the numbers and who were there. Because the state will look at not only individuals, but how many of the families of the school participated in certain activities. So how, how well is a photography um, looked at for the state? I mean, I mean I'm talking about an individual, because a lot of times we capture things and events on film, mm -hmm. or, you know, and may not always, right. every parent, uh, just open house. Some parents came from the back door, some didn't come in the front right. door and sign in. Right. However, we, we took pictures of the pictures are Pictures are great add-ons. They're great for Twitter, they're great you know, for all of that. But you really, I, I, you know, I can't say this enough and I'm not trying to be, you know, no, hounding no, you about I, this, I but you've got to figure out a system to capture every person, every family that walks through this door. You know, so if they're coming to the side doors, don't have the side doors open, uh, you know, or tell people not to let them in. You know, I mean, really have a central place to have, um, you know, five computers set up and they go up there and, or you do, you break it down K2 and 3, 4, or, you know, and just do it, and do it that way. Mm -hmm. But you want, you know, you want, you want to capture everybody. If there's, if their uncle's there, their aunt's there, their cousins are there, you know, you, you get, you get all that. That's just, that, the district and the district and state had really take a close look at that. So you graduated from sign-in sheets, huh? You, you're on the computer where you're... They, we have computers set up, and they, they, they either can do it themselves, the parent, if they want, do the self one, where they just go in and, you know, just a spreadsheet, they type in their name, how many students, how many kids are with them, and, you know, or we do it, we do it for them. Well, what my parents was sharing with me um, the other day, how, you know, she's in the urban suburban school, so as well, and they actually I know, I know. Yeah. That's maybe what we need to look at. I don't know. Well, maybe that's part of the thing that this team can kind of come up with some ideas and things that we can present back. I'm even 
think about like absenteeism. Like if you look at the sheet in the yellow for absenteeism, but any ideas that as a community um, can support us in trying to kind of get the kids here. Um, even in for at least for science, we have the Rochester Engineering Society who's going to be coming in to help support in um, science core lessons and the expeditions. But any other ideas that we can definitely help support in that area because we're in the red in meeting that target as well. And um, moving forward, one of the things that as a community school we're going to need to do is a sort of a, a needs assessment. So not just from the staff, but the community leaders also filling out this assessment and some of the needs that uh, some of our families may need in order for the whole community to be successful. So any ideas that you can really bring to the table will benefit everyone as much as possible. So I think one of the key things that maybe we can pick one of these sections for next time to maybe spend time, either maybe two, and we can break up into two groups and kind of throw out some ideas on how to support. I know John, you sent me something about a spelling bee mm -hmm. for the 19th Ward, so we can definitely look into that as well. Um, someone has brought up doing activities and programs right before there's a day off or a holiday or something to try to get them in as well. Um, but even, as much as like coordinating how to do sign-ins and check-ins and other things with families um, is really important in making it so that we meet these goals and targets because we were so close and it's kind of really you know hard to look at the numbers and say really 0 0.5 0 0.5 they can find point five somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you know, so. That's what math does. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You round up. You don't round down. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And how we build upon that spelling bee, because then Mrs. Walsh is kind of testing that, because we've always participated with the next new year. Okay. And so we really need to build upon the next year. Maybe, you know, pulling in some of the community members to help. Because if we, after they figure out what we deal with the budget with ELT, it could possibly become a club or something that we do because we're trying to do two days a week where we do, um, in order to meet that 200 hours that we're required to do, um, spelling could be one of them, either a science um, could be another, whether it's Lego robotics or something where they're here and still building on the academics, but you know, <laughs> or you know, keeping them here as much as possible um, is really important. So the next part is kind of just the next steps, and I think I went over it. If you guys can just take a look, like I said, you can pick out of the ones that are in the red or yellow, which ones we like, which two we like to focus on for our next meeting. Because although we have a plan for science with the Rochester Engineering, we could always come up with another to help really push that or drive that home. So, can I just shoot something out there? Because I've been thinking about like how do we go about monitoring as a group, and um, and this is just an idea if we created like subgroups maybe from this committee and you know there could be one group that does like the academic piece um, another group that deals with family engagement and then um, social emotional you know I guess I'm not really sure how to because I think you know, if you lump all the academics, that's a big lift um, when you talk about the community school and um, family engagement. That's a big lift in itself, but I think we need to be <coughs> focused on what we're doing and then 
and you know we have action plans for each meeting mm -hmm. or something so uh, that's just a, a proposal or an idea um, could we break up into the different same that we have talked about this year like the um, like family engagement was one and like that was another yeah, we had, um, what we did was our goals from our SIG, uh, one is, is uh, following the expeditionary learning model with like, not fidelity, but integrity, integrity yes. <laughs> um, and I guess, and the one was looking at our data, which I think goes along, along with the data points here. And then we were talking about um, family engagement and then the school climate. So I, I think that works because these indicators kind of fall in line. The only thing that I worry about is um, the district next school year is adopting a district-wide curriculum. And I don't know where we as a school stand being expeditionary learning. So. So that's just, <laughs> then, you know, we're just always about change. But I think one of the key things um, that we need to make sure we have is a community school subgroup um, as one, and I think family engagement as another. And then, is there any other ones that anyone can think about? Do we just want one as an academic one? Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, I guess. So, say, say what were the subgroups? Community school. I guess my question is what or falls community under community. community school? I'm just curious, like, how would that, because I could see, like, academic, for example, and community school overlapping in some ways, because, like, the engineering is part of our community but they're gonna help with the academics. So, so I'm just trying to, I, I I'm newer to this one, so I'm trying to think of how. <laughs> could it be community and family engagement? It could be, yeah. Because um, I do have a video, I didn't wanna show it today, but there's a video that kinda really explains what the community school model is, but it's, um, the bigger picture is bringing the community into the school, um, kinda, kinda taking away that barrier where the community comes into the building. Mm -hmm. If students need dental services, um, we have it on campus so that they're not absent. If they need any health um, issues, I know where we're located, there really isn't a health clinic attached, but there's some way where we can you know, do a mobile or find some organization that does like a mobile cl clinic. That That's the one thing that stinks is we're not in our community right now. Yeah. <laughs> But we can plan for it, so yeah. that's the thing. So that subgroup can plan for when we're back in okay. the actual yeah. neighborhood, mm -hmm. then we can look at all of the other neighboring like organizations and um, yeah, resources. Exactly. Unity Health and right. Genesee Street by the Boys and Girls Club, is that still there? Is that Jordan or something like that? Jordan Health Center. I think there's a Jordan House Center that's on Hudson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's they, okay. Then what I think there's a small, I think there's a satellite. Satellite. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I definitely agree with the community and the Here's the data, like on a map, of where all the kids come from. That's something that I think that community and parent engagement can kind of come up with too. Because um, doing that and seeing um, where they're coming from, because from my understanding, they're throughout the city. It's not just yeah. in the Mason Ford neighborhood. And one um, of the schools that's been a community school um, started off looking at it that way, like where the kids are, and then started focusing on um, the resources and um, within the neighborhood, but then thought about it because the kids are spread out through the city. It's a matter of creating a database that shares like mm -hmm. all of the resources within the city of Rochester so that if they live on the east side, here's a list of all 
you know, the resources on the east side, if it's on the west side, that kind of thing. But I think that's something that that um, community and parent engagement can kind of start to yeah. build off of. I mean, what 17 did is they recruited their kindergarten in one first and second grades. In the neighborhood. Close to the school. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and this is a, a sneaky point for us because yeah. um, like 17 and, you know, some of the other schools, they're in their zone. You know, like whether it's Southwest or South Zone, I don't even know the zone. But... Um, we're a citywide school, so we draw from children all over. So, and they were talking about what does that mean that we are going to become like just South Zone. Um, so those are conversations that I think that we'll have. Um, but they've been saying that the South Zone, where we're our school is positioned, has been losing enrollment pretty drastically. So, I don't know if you guys have Charter experienced that. Charter school. Mm -hmm. We just need to and if that happens, look really good and start attracting kids to our community schools. Mm -hmm. You're certainly going they, to have a well-renovated school by the time you get back down no, there. I, um, <laughs> I said, um, I a few pictures, but I was there the other day, and they're right on track with, um, so cool. you know, the walls are going up, they're, we're slapping, um, is it mortar in between the mm -hmm. bricks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to say grout, because I don't <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's just exciting, just the size of the gym. They said our, our gym is just a few inches uh, short of a high school gym. A high school, but we're not going to have like bleachers and things like that. So it's going to look smaller, but it's a, it's a lot bigger than that little box we had before. Um, but I just was walking through there and I'm like, well, what is that going to be? And what is this? And it's going to be fun. So right now, I am Lise Herna, the Community and Parent Engagement Specialist in Academics for the two, right? Mm -hmm. So again, Community and Parent Engagement as one subgroup, uh -huh. and then Academics as the other. Yeah, and uh, uh, there may be, may be to do... The absenteeism and yeah, the absenteeism um, like safety need to be a yeah, so that could probably fall under the mm -hmm. climate. Mm -hmm. Has the absenteeism and that data been researched to find out like how many students didn't come to school, why they didn't come to school? That's or what we're doing. That's what we're doing now. Um, but it's again like um, Paul was saying, you know, just. You can spend a lot of time just trying to figure out a, a platform or a format so that you can document everything that you're doing and then it can be available at like a snapshot and everybody can access it. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the things that we're playing with. We're kind of working on like a school dashboard that has all the grade levels and it has their data in their progress monitoring, you know, when they test them throughout the market periods. Um, but then, you know, also documenting um, so that everyone can see, you know, you know, little Johnny didn't come to school for the first five days because transportation wasn't set up. And then a week later, he had the flu, you know, and so those are the type of things that we're working on. And it's hard because, you know, um, and many didn't realize, and this is just what we knew, we knew that we had over 20 families homeless mm -hmm. last year. And so, you know, with that, you know, and that's just what we knew. Right. You know, that comes with a lot of, and, and it, it reacted with transportation because by the time you went to the shelter on um, Dewey, 
they couldn't stay there for, for a couple of weeks and then they get shifted to another shelter. That means the kids can't. So to, you know, I, I get a little passionate when I talk about this because for the state to come in and say, oh, your attendance is such and such when, when they're not taking into account all the families that we've worked with, that, that we've changed addresses within months, maybe four, four or five times, trying to get transportation, you know, but they're just, they're just getting data. The kids didn't come in, and you know, and so for me, working with the community, I like to see, you know, something comes up and maybe we need to look at the Salvation Armies and being some partners. And I know it's thinking outside the box, but you know, truly, you know, it's something, we need to do something different because it's not getting any better, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. And um, people are hurting. And so, you know, they kind of look and look like the school is the end all. <laughs> you know, we, we're the ones that's answering all the questions, but it's rough, and that's why I, I said, Cam, I said, you know, it's hard for us to, me to write down, oh, I saw this many <coughs> parents today. I, I simply don't have the and I know she doesn't, you know, simply have the time all the time to sit and let me check this box. I said, you know, we spent one, we spent almost a whole day on one child saying that he got jumped. I mean, and, and that, you know, but it was at a parent's request. So I just say that to say, you know, you don't know until you walk the walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, talk is easy, but until you get in this building and actually see, you know, kids not having anything to eat, you know, they're stealing food because they don't know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know where they're gonna wake up. And so we're dealing with that on a day to day. And people don't realize, you know, they just they just want numbers. And you know, if I haven't had a place to sleep all night, I'm not I'm not, I don't care about learning. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just keeping it real. So so you know I, you know I believe in a higher power, but you, you know he gives us a mission, and sometimes you know that mission seems very hard. And this past year. It was in Carmen's in the office, you know, and I, I, God bless their souls because I know that there was many times by the time they got transportation started, kid had moved again. Mm -hmm. So now yep. they can't come to school because they don't have transportation. So, so you know, so we, that's what we've been dealing with. So, so I ask you all and, you know, help us see, see. Yeah, one, Someone higher than us. <laughs> one thing we've been trying to do is uh, get the neighborhood service centers involved with the schools. Um, the video that I shot at, I think it was the July uh, Southwest Common Council Education Committee, uh, Daisy Algren came in. She's the director of the neighborhood service centers, and she came in uh, to talk about um, what the neighborhood service center might be able to do to, because they, they get a notification if somebody's gotten evicted and the center was involved with it, they know about it and they could get the word to the transportation folks at the city school district that much sooner and also know what center, you know, what shelter did they go to because we really need to cut down the number of days lost by these kids because it's, it's really killing them in terms of performance, not to mention hurting the school as far as attendance. So uh, right now she's kind of working mostly with uh, 19 and going to be involved with 16. But as soon as you get back down there, that's something that they're working primarily with the Southwest Neighborhood Service Center right now, but she's looking at seeing what they can do.
Can you start some of the kind of the covers or closet or as a school community for the people that need things? I mean, there's plenty of people here yeah. and in our community that would help us. You know? One of the things being the community schools, um, we're going to need to have a like a food cabinet, mm -hmm. um, a food cupboard. Yes, yeah, that we're going to start. But definitely, clothes closet um, is definitely important in the winter. Coats, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. mittens, those kinds of things. So we can definitely start that now. Actually, I'm just intrigued. Like, there's three things we don't have a score. Like, that's yeah. not okay. Yeah. <laughs> a half a point each is not worth it. So. Is there anything that you would change? Just the sub the subgroups. Yes. Say so again, the subgroups breaking um, yeah. breaking up into subgroups. That's what we would change. Yeah, that's what we're going to do for next time. And then having yeah, the and probably having group like group. an overview of what each group. We is. can definitely have two rooms. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even knowing what each, if next time we discuss what each group exactly is, then it will be easier to do that too. I think. Like to distinguish the difference between, yeah. So like, um, kind of a breakdown as far as what is academics doing, or yeah. focus, what's the climate focus, and then yeah, and then we'll be focused in those groups. Mm -hmm. You know, this note taking is just new for me. I'm impressed with you. Know, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Pay attention as well. Just think out it. <laughs> Um, but I also think what we can do is um, we just created this this rolling agenda, so I think changing is providing the agenda ahead of ahead of time as well, so that people can review. So. So, one well, now this is a question for you all. Do you think? Um, like you were saying, providing descriptions. Do you think the subgroups should provide the descriptions, or would you like me to provide you with the description of what the groups are going to do? I feel like the subgroups should kind of discuss that on what your focus is, as opposed to me telling you. Because personally, I feel like as long as it's shared out, like at the end of the next yeah. meeting. So there's not a ton of overlap. Yeah. Because I feel like in the past, sometimes we have a lot of overlap. hands in the same exact pot. Yeah. And it's silly for people to do the same thing. Right. Like there is going to be overlap. Yeah. Like the engineers fall into community and education, mm -hmm. but maybe the academic group takes care of them. So that, to me, that's the only big thing to make sure there isn't, there's going to be overlap. I mean, it's a school and we're a community and that's the whole point, <laughs> but that we're not doing the same exact things. Mm -hmm. And would you have knowledge based on him that you may not have to know the group that you want to get for the state out of said committees okay. that we need to to um, aim towards rather than us just really willy, you know, we, yeah. you know, when we get brainstorming, we uh, Forget about what we Forget really about want. Yeah, we have lots of great ideas, but if they're not going to yeah. boost the score, maybe, which is our maybe goal maybe right now. Provide some great guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. cool. So, we'll see everyone November 13th. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure that the agenda is out in the whole advance. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so much, everybody. Thank you.